Hello, this is John with Brainstorm Comics and Gaming. Um, we're going to do this a little bit differently yet again. Um, we're going to do it kind of like last week, but a mix with before as well. Um, we're going to go through the highlights of DC, independent books, and Marvel. Um, during this one though, unlike last week, we will be doing the, giving the solicits for each one. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, the LCS, to the Brainstorm Comics and Gaming YouTube channel if you like the content. Um, but let's get on to this week's uh, top three DC. So coming in at number three this week is Checkmate number one. The reason that this made the top three is Brian Michael Bendis and Alex Maleev are providing the writing and the art. The duo has been together for two decades at this point, putting out some of the more memorable books within the comic industry during that period. Um, this follows up on the event Leviathan miniseries that took place about a year and a half ago at this point. It kind of got derailed because of COVID last year and all the um, happenings with that. And the other cool thing about this one is it has a new underworld assassin. But let's get to the solicit for this one and let you know exactly what the story is about. From the award-winning creative team behind last year's Event Leviathan comes the next surprising chapter in DC Comics' Deadliest Saga. Leviathan has agents and acolytes all over the world, but what is the secret behind its powers? The planet's last best hope to infiltrate Leviathan may be this motley collection of spy masters now teamed up to try to take back the world that was stolen from under all of us. Green Arrow, the question, Talia al Ghul and other unlikely allies converge to tackle Leviathan as members of the new Checkmate. But who is the surprise hero behind this team? Big clues to the future of the DC Universe starts here. So as you can see, this one promises to be pretty important to the overall narrative going on in the DC Universe right now. Um, you've no doubt heard Chandler and myself talking about how excited we are with, with a lot of the things going on. But let's turn our attention now to the number two pick for DC. And the number two pick is Batman Reptilian, number one. So the reasons why this one made the top three, uh, Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp are the top two, top two reasons. Um, Garth Ennis, the writer of The Boys, Liam Sharp, who's putting out some amazing artwork right now, uh, promises a very dark story in this. Um, as we know, Garth Ennis doesn't really tell lighthearted stories, so we can only guess as to how dark this one will go at this point. Um, also, this is under the Black Label. Uh, Black Label is putting out some top tier books that are outside the normal DC continuity, giving the creators a lot of leeway in what they do with the stories. And last but not least, um, this is a different take on the Batman and his villains as only Garth Ennis can do. Um, but let's get to the solicit and see what this one's about. What strikes fear into the hearts of those who terrorize Gotham? It used to be Batman, but something far more frightening than a mere man stalks the shadows and is after Gotham's villains. How savage must a monster be to haunt the dreams of monsters? Pick up this dark and bone-chilling tale by comics legend Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp to find out. So as you can see from that one, um, a different take on the character, promising uh, Batman is not the scariest thing in it, which I'm sure a lot of the uh, Batman fans are, are shocked to hear. So moving on to the number one pick of the week for DC, Infinite Frontier number one. If you've watched Turning the Page this week, you know that um, Chandler and I are very excited about this book. Um, it is written by Joshua Williamson, one of our favorite writers. Um, he is the writer of... Um, of Ghosted, but also Nailbiter, um, and also The Flash for DC. Um, one of the things that we were very happy to hear in an interview that Joshua Williamson gave was that this is going to be a character-driven big event. It's not just going to be big, big happenings, people punching each other. It's going to be based on what's go been going on in the DC universe. Um, for all of you who like new characters, this also introduces the new character extract. Um, and the story overall is about removing characters that shouldn't, shouldn't be in the DCU, ones that are out of time and out of place. So I'm very interested in the crux of this one, but let's go to the solicit. When our hero saved the multiverse from Perpetua and Dark Knight's Death Metal, everything was put back where it belonged, 
and we do mean everything. All the damage from all the crises was undone, and heroes long thought gone returned from whatever exile they had been in. Most of them, at least. Alan Scott, the Green Lantern from the Justice Society of America, has noticed some of his allies are still missing in action, and he's determined to find them. There are others, though, who would rather remain hidden than explain themselves, like Roy Harper, a.k.a. Arsenal, a man who should be dead, but now is not. Plus, what does all of this mean for the DCU's place in the multiverse? On opposite sides of a dimensional divide, both Barry Allen and President Superman ponder this question. Not to mention the dark side of it all, or a team of multiversal heroes called Justice Incarnate. Um, so as, as I said, Joshua Williamson has been giving some interviews regarding this. Um, he promises that this is the first act in a much larger narrative. So if you are a DC fan, you're definitely going to want to read this book. It's going to have big impact on what's to follow. Um, so like I said, this is one that should be on your list this week. But let's move on to the independence of the week. So let's go to our number three pick of the week. And that one is Good Luck Number One. This one makes a list for several reasons. Uh, number one of which is it is a Boom Studios book. Um, as we all know, Boom has been putting out some top tier um, books over the last couple of months. Uh, actually, last couple of years, I would say. Um, a lot of them are being optioned. A lot of them are uh, gaining huge followings as they go along. So in this one, luck is a quantifiable aspect of your, of your being. Um, so it, it sounds like a very unique story. Um, this is also for fans of Seven Seekers and one Runaways. It follows young characters. Um, but let's go to the solicit to get the details. What if luck was quantifiable and something everyone was born with? Everyone except, that is, the, infor the unfortunates. Teenagers born with absolutely zero luck. Now, with the world mysteriously plunged into chaos and reality itself threatened, they will be our only hope to save the world. Our last hope is those with no chance of success. The only thing anyone can wish them is good luck. So as I said, this one sounds like it has a very unique premise. I could easily see this one being turned into a TV show or a movie just based off of, off of the solicit for it. Um, so I would keep my eyes out for this one if I were you. And the number two pick of the week is MFKZ number one. This is based on the Netflix movie. It is by the acclaimed artist Run, and it's set in a dystopian metropolis, hiding secrets that are even stranger than the people who, who inhabit it. Let's go to the solicit though. The Netflix distributed hit movie by Studio 4C, Batman Gotham Knight The Animatrix, comes to comics with an oversized number one event, Jump in the unique world created by legendary artist Run, following Angelino and his flaming skull pal, Venz, who live in a gang and cockroach-infested dystopian metropolis called DMC, a city that hides secrets even weirder than its inhabitants. So this one has a cool look to it. I have the feeling that this is going to be the breakout of the, of the week. Um, I am not going to lie, I have not watched the Netflix, show, the Netflix movie. Um, but people have told me it's hilarious, and like I said, I think that this one will be a hit this week. So let's go to our number one pick for the independence this week, and that is Spawn Universe number one. So the reason that this one made the top ten, or top three, um, is Todd McFarlane is writing it, Jim Chung, Steven Segovia, and Marcio Takura are doing the art. Um, more importantly for all of you Spawn fans out there, this leads into the three ongoings that are coming up. Um, new heroes and villains are promised to be in this title, and also it is a double-sized issue. So you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck in this one if you are a Spawn fan. Let's go to the solicit, though. It's here, the official introduction to the long-awaited Spawn's universe, a double-sized issue that begins a storyline so huge that three new Spawn-related monthly titles will spill out from it, including a new Spawn title, Gunslinger Spawn Monthly, and, new team, and a new team book bringing a handful of these characters together in their own book. With this one shot, the world of Spawn changes forever. New heroes, new villains, and more importantly, new titles coming to a comic shop near you. 
Join this list of artists as we unveil a historic moment in the mythology of Spawn's universe. Jim Chung, Todd McFarlane, Steven Segovia, and Marcio Takara. So it's been, I think, close to two decades at this point since uh, Todd McFarlane has introduced new Spawn titles. And that is why Spawn Universe number one has made our number one pick of the week. And that brings us to our top three Marvel picks of the week. And we're gonna begin with number three, Web of Spider-Man number two. So this is a good story for the entire family if you're looking to read books with your young ones. Um, it, it has been, the first issue introduced a new character and it seems to promise that, you know, there are more new characters on the horizon within this one. And it also offers some global action. But let's go to the solicit for this one. Spider-Man is in a world of trouble. Spider-Man and his friends at the Worldwide Engineering Brigade are always trying to help people. And now, thanks to his newfound friends, Spider-Man is getting the, cha the chance to take his great power and great responsibility across the globe. But where Spidey goes, trouble follows. And this time is no different. So like I said, this one's a little bit um, more lighthearted than the, than the other Spider-Man titles. Not that any of them are really heavy, but this one is more intended for an all, 80, all ages type of audience. With that being said, let's move on to number two. And that is Heroes Return number one. This is the conclusion to the Heroes Reborn storyline. We finally get the epic throwdown between Squadron Supreme and the Avengers. Um, Jason Aaron is, is the writer on it. And there's a, I think there's a hint that there's gonna be something big that, that goes on in this storyline uh, and how it concludes. Um, also, Ed McGinnis provides the art. But let's, let's say what the, what the solicit promises. An epic oversized slugfest between the Squadron Supreme and the otherworldly group of Avengers for the final fate of the whacked out world of Heroes Reborn. So like I said, you know, this is the conclusion to the, um, I guess we can call it eight part storyline, even though they're, they're counting this as a number one instead of part eight. Um, and I think that, like I said, I have the suspicion that something big is gonna happen at the, at the end, but we will see whether I am right about that or not. And that brings us to our number one pick of the week, and that is Gamma Flight number one. Um, as I'm sure many of you know, the employees and Brainstorm are big fans of Al Ewing's Immortal Hulk. This spins out of that title, and Al Ewing is, again, the writer on this one. Um, it's a team book, they're on the run, and as happens with most Hulk characters, destruction is set to follow. But let's move on to, this, to the solicit. Spinning out of Immortal Hulk, Bruce Banner's gamma-powered allies go on the run. Gamma Flight had one job, find and stop the Hulk. But when push came to smash, they sided with the Green Goliath, and the human world intends to make them regret it. Puck? Absorbing Man, Titania, Dak, Doc Sasquatch, Dr. Charlene McGowan, and a horribly changed Rick Jones are fugitives from every known authority, but a team that full of Gamma is bound to break before long. Al Ewing, Crystal Frazier, and Lan Medina mastermind a whole new world of Gamma. As we saw with Immortal Hulk, uh, Al Ewing definitely had a different take on it, and offered up a whole, slew new, a whole slew of new characters that we all enjoyed. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. I think that we will probably see new characters along the way in this one as well. So that's the end of this week's The Storm Watch. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to LCS, like, comment, and subscribe to the Brainstorm Comics and Gaming YouTube channel. And don't forget to watch, you, um, don't forget to watch Turning the Page and you can hear us talk about some of these on our uh, weekly news and opinions uh, video. And thank you for watching.